So I've been told, we have been told that the main job of Vermeer was not a painter, but, but an art dealer. Yeah. So this is very important to understand the corpus is not so big, right? Yeah. So he was, well, in first instance, he was an art dealer. And uh, then he was a member of the Civic Guard in Amsterdam, over in Delft as well. Um, what does it mean? It's the militia, like... Uh, ah, really? Which has been depicted in Rembrandt's Nightwatch. Like a soldier? Like a, like a soldier in the, in, the, in the town of Delft. Yes. You could compare it like this. Um, so, I mean, it's a huge contrast with what he is doing in his yes. paintings as well. So refined. Yeah, yeah. And then he was a member um, of the St. Luke's Guild, which is the, the Painters Guild in, in Delft. He was one of the, the chairs of that, so very, well, important uh, function. And of course, he had a family with 14 children, which <laughs> must have taken quite some time as well. But is it new? he was not so successful as a dealer or what? Because his father was also a dealer. Yeah, sure. So he was raised in a family uh, where art was very important already as a young boy. And, um, well, at a certain moment, we know that visitors, even from France, came to Delft and visited his, his, his atelier, his workshop. Okay. And there's a one wonderful description of a French visitor who says that he has visited Vermeer, the, 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 the célèbre Vermeer. Mm -hmm. And then he says, but unfortunately, there were no paintings. And then he went to one of the uh, bakers in the town of Delft and he found a painting that was made by Vermeer. But he said, I think it was much too expensive. So he paid too much for that, which is quite interesting, of course, uh, that he described that. Everything went well with Vermeer up to what we call the year of disaster, 1672, when uh, the Netherlands were invaded by England, France and the German countries at the same moment. And from that moment onwards, Vermeer was not longer able to sell his own paintings, but neither the paintings in his, in his shop, so the yes. art dealer paintings, so to speak. And that was a moment that, where his wife later describes how he really got to, into despair in, in a very short time span. And uh, finally, she, she says that within one and a half day, he transformed from a healthy man, he was 43 years old, into a dead man. And then she got aware of the fact that there were a lot of depths, for example, she was not aware of that. So this tragedy is an unbelievable contrast with the calmness and yeah, the introverted paintings he's created. Uh -huh. So it was kind of meditation in a way. I don't know what was happening, but it is, I mean, think of the 14 or 11 children playing around downstairs in quite a small house, and then the man himself focusing <laughs> on these kind of paintings. It's not, yeah. But it has a lot of fantasies about his life, and not so much element. There's quite, there's much more than we thought in the past. Ah, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what is really new about Vermeer? I think one of the most important aspects is that we now know how important Catholic faith was for his life, but also for his art, and how uh, the Jesuit order, who was, um, yeah, neighbor, a, a neighbor and living next door, how they influenced uh, his art as well, and how their devotional literature uh, immediately influenced what he was doing. But uh, what are the sources of what we know about what we know? Well, especially devotional treatises. Mm -hmm. So they describe, for example, how a camera obscura is a kind of optical device that will enable you to let divine light into your heart. Like light is, in, well, will enter the box and will project an image. Yes. And the way Vermeer's painting, and he's aware of optical instruments, shows how these kind of devices were very important in the way he was handling light, for example, or projections of light, or color, and so, so on. So we so see on. a di direct, direct link between the Jesuit and him. Absolutely. But how, how do we find all this detail? Yeah, there's a lot of it in, in the archives, but also in devotional literature. Uh -huh. um, and, well, there are lo quite some uh, written sources about Vermeer. And his inventory is incredible. I mean, it really enables us to walk through the house and understand how every single room functioned. But how did, uh, why didn't we find these details before? Well, so, uh, some of them we did, but it's by connecting uh, 
existing details and sources with new uh, interpretations and, and findings mm -hmm. that we are now able to well come up with um, well these new kind of uh, and how, how could it happen that we for completely forgot him uh, until Tore Burger yeah Well, that's, that's terrible, no? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> Pretty is. Although in the 18th century, he was still well known in the Netherlands. And, okay. But outside the Netherlands, not. It's just a tiny little oeuvre. Huh? I mean, we're talking about probably 45 paintings originally. There are 37 still left, but quite a lot of them yeah, were in private collections for a long time. Uh. And so it's not like Rembrandt, where we have 350 paintings. And we, I mean, he there was a, was a better opportunity to see his art in the past. But from 1866 onwards, when Théophile Touré wrote his famous article in the Gazette de Beaux Arts, yes. I mean, that was the starting point. A French guy. A French guy, But again. But he had, a, he had, a, he had an, an incredible eye, no? Yeah, yeah. Because And most of the paintings that he identified were already good Vermeer. Yeah, and, and up to that moment were presented as paintings by Peter de Hoog or Gabriel Metsu or Jan Steen and so on, I mean, by other artists. Mm. So the reconstruction of Vermeer's oeuvre is something that only happened in the last, let's say, 150 years. But what, what is the revolution of this exhibition, despite the fact that it's a miracle that you have 28 paintings? What is really absolutely new? What is absolutely new is yeah. to see more paintings together than Vermeer has ever seen himself. <laughs> I and really, is, <laughs> and that is no, but but to, I mean, without um, joking, I think seeing these paintings together is really helping to put a new lens on him. I mean, we really see him opening doors. He's starting something, then just once, and then he moves into a new direction and he tries something else. So he's really innovative, he's very experimental. That's something we also see when we look through the paint layers. So we see him building up his, his paintings and his constructions. And, and then we also see the pleasure of painting, which is under the surface. And could you speak about the one that vanished completely in 90 from the Isabel Garner Museum in Boston, yeah, yeah. which was robbed? Yeah. Because we, we miss this one, right? Yeah, so there's one painting that was stolen in 1990, uh, the concert, which is still, well, it, it's, we still don't know where it is. Um, but it would, of course, be wonderful if one day that would surface again. But and imagine if that would happen in the next four months. Because it's a co very complex composition, no? Yeah. yeah it's And it comes from the collection of Torre Burger. Yeah. So what do you think about this painting? Yeah, well, it was one of these incredible paintings where he really stepped, made this step back so that you more of an, of an overview of the space. Quite a lot of times he's really close, really near the surface of, of our world, so to speak. Uh, think about the, the tronies, for example, or the, the lace maker from the Louvre. Um, but there he's stepping back, so the space is much bigger. Mm. It's a little bit comparable to the love letter uh, from the Rijksmuseum collection. Okay. And what is your favorite, favorite, your chouchou? Yeah, it's, it's probably the most asked question, but it's like weather and seasons. It's changing all the time. It depends on your own feelings and how, I mean, one day it can be indeed the lace maker, the next day it can be mistress and maid from but the you, pickle. But you studied them a lot. Yeah. You may, did you make one discovery which changed your mind about Vermeer recently? I mean, in the last years? Yeah, it's re I think it's really this idea that this concept of Vermeer, of this really refined painter, who was almost a photographer avant la lettre, I mean, it does not align with the way he's creating his paintings. So when you look at him, the way he's building up his compositions, changing, taking things out, adding other things, it's, it's a very complex way of creating the perfect goal. And I think that's one of the most yeah, enlightening ideas. Of so he has different steps? Yeah, he has. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs>